Hello, welcome to Unit 5, Lesson 2. This is Part 1 of the lesson, the mandatory portion. And today we're going to be talking about cells of the nervous system. And by the end of today's lesson, you should be able to identify the key cells of the nervous system, including neurons. And neurons can be broken down functionally into sensory, motor, and interneurons. That will be the mandatory portion of the video. And then part two, if you're away, will cover th these concepts. Otherwise, it's optional. And we will be going over this portion in class. So, to begin with, what is a neuron? And last day, we quickly talked about the idea of neuron and neuroglial cells. But to define, neurons are the cells of our nervous system that conduct electrical signals. in response to chemical or physical changes in their environment. And another word we use for chemical or physical changes is simply stimuli. And basically, if you have one cell, it equals a neuron. And many neurons equal a nerve. So if you bundle the neurons together, it becomes a nerve. So let's just add that in. They need to be bundled to be the nerve. Okay. And there's an estimate that we have s approximately 100 billion neurons in our nervous system, most of which are in our brain. And although they vary in their function and structure, the details, the basics are the same. So they have this basic common structure. That is characterized as follows. So if we draw it, you can start with the nucleus, and around the nucleus are these projections. There's thousands of these projections coming off. And then they have what looks like almost a long tail that ends in more projections. There's lots of little projections off of here. This first portion the ends, all the little projections, <clears throat> they're called the dendrite 
or dendrites plural. And they serve to receive and integrate chemical information. Then you have your cell body. Your cell body isn't always directly in the middle of all the dendrites. It depends on the type of neuron, but all neurons do have cell bodies. And you can typically recognize them because that's where the nucleus will be. And the cell body is, carries out all the functions we talked about last day. So it carries out or not last day I should say in last unit the so-called housekeeping functions. So when we talked about all the various organelles they'll be located in the cell body the day-to-day -day drudgery of a cell, making proteins, mitochondria processing energy, that type of thing. It's really not drudgery. It's what keeps us alive. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we have this longer portion. It's called the axon. And the axon's job is to conduct the electrical signal. And then when we reach the end of the line of the axon, what do you get at the end of the line of your bus ride or your plane ride? You come to a, that's right, terminal. We have the axon and its job is to convert electrical signal back to chemical. And why we convert between electrical and chemical signals we'll discuss next day. So that's the basic structure of a neuron and what we're going to look at is there's really three functional classes of neurons. So the three functional classes are I'm keeping you in suspense while I write this First is called a sensory neuron. Which is also called an afferent. It's also known as a afferent neuron. And <clears throat> what these do are they receive and transmit sensory information. blank. Okay, you're going to get your sensory information on the outer extremities of your body. So it's called your blank system. If you said PNS, that's correct. And it's going to transmit it towards your spinal cord and brain. So to your CNS. That's correct. Okay. Then we have oh, one other thing these things are their axons 
are myelinated and we're going to talk about in class what myelination is. Which means if they're myelinated in appearance they're going to be white. Next class is called an functional class is called an interneuron. And these are typically located in the central nervous system. So either you're blank or blank. if you said brain or spine no cord you are correct okay. and they actually serve to connect sensory neurons to the last type of neuron we're going to talk about which are to motor neurons while integrating information So it can happen that information is coming into any one given interneuron from many sensory neurons and it will integrate that information and then send the message on to the motor neuron. To help it integrate and talk to many neurons at once, it is actually non-myelinated. and if you look at it this gives it a gray appearance and as I mentioned in part two of this lesson we'll be looking at what myelination means and why it exists and then the last functional class as mentioned because the interneurons connect to this it's motor neurons And these carry information really doesn't want me to dot the I if you're watching this so it carries information from the blank to the blank. So it was connecting to the interneuron which is con which is located where? That's right, in the central nervous system. So it's carrying that information from the central nervous system back to the that's correct, the peripheral nervous system, PNS. To what we call effectors. They're called effectors because they are going to cause an effect such as muscles and glands and similar to your sensory neurons these are myelinated and white in appearance.
Okay, so that is the end of the mandatory portion. If you have any questions about that, please come ask me next day in class. If you were away, you should proceed to watch part two of this video. Otherwise, I hope you have a really good day, and I will see you in class.